Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the Scientix webinar, Making STEM Global, Engaging Youth in Cultural Competency Building Through Collaborative, collaborative Engineering Projects. My name is Marina Jimenez and I will moderate this session. With us today we have Saranya Sathananthan, I'm sorry if I don't pronounce that correctly. She is the Outreach Project Manager for Design Squad Global at WGBH Educational Foundation. She, fa she manages the program's outreach to national and international educational partners and supports Design Squad Global clubs in the U.S. by facilitating their matching and collaboration with international clubs. She also provides expertise in design engineering content and leads trainings for formal and informal educa educators at workshops and conferences. She holds a bachelor's degree in materials science and engineering and received her master's in bioengineering from Georgia Institute of Technology. Prior to her work at WGBH, she served in the U.S. Peace Corps and taught computer technology at an industrial professional school in Mozambique. Before we start the webinar, I'd like to remind you that if you would like to receive a certificate, please you will have to fit uh, our, our feedback sur survey, which will be shared at uh, through the chat uh, at the middle of the we this webinar. Only participants who attended the webinar and filled in this survey will be able to receive this certificate. Uh, going back to the presentation, during this presentation you will find out how you can make global connections to STEM sorry, to, um, from an educational point of view with Design Squad Global, an Emmy Award winning website with hands on activities, design challenges and streaming videos designed to, to increase kids' understanding of engineering. Also, my colleague Noel in the list of participants will be helping you with any technical problems you may have. So please write to her privately if you experience any difficulties in attending this session. Also, please remember to turn any cameras or microphones down. Uh, at the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address questions to our expert through the chat, but you can still post them through the whole seminar webinar. So this is all. I, I will leave uh, the floor to our expert, and I hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, um, I want to thank, uh, first of all, Scientex for this privilege of being able to share our work from WGBH's Design Squad Global. Um, we have had a number of opportunities to do outreach with organizations in the U.S., but this is really the first time that we are reaching ed educators across Europe. Um, and so I hope that you will be able to glean some useful ideas to take back to your classrooms and enrichment programs. Uh, through this program, um, through this webinar. So I want to begin by asking how many of you are familiar with Design Squad Global? Um, have you used any of the program's materials in your classrooms or enrichment activities? And you can type your answer into the presenters, uh, to the, the chat box, uh, just so I have an idea of where uh, to begin. And Noel, can I ask? how to pull up the actual slides for the presentation. I think I see the video, but if I could get some help with the slides, that would be great. Okay, I'm going to pull this into the full screen here. All right. Um, so today I want to provide you with an overview of Design Squad and its involvement uh, or involvement to Design Squad Global. I want to share with you some media-based resources that make a global connection to engineering that can serve as complementary or supplementary support to what you're already doing in your classrooms. Um, these include hands-on activities that provide a global context for engineering. Um, and then I want to dive right into our newest outreach program, which is called Design Squad Global uh, Clubs. And it connects kids from around the world through collaborative engineering projects. 
and um, towards the end of the webinar, I'll share with you some of those resources from the club program that you can use in your classroom and enrichment programs, and then a few stories of how the program has impacted youth from around the world. Uh, so for those of you who have not heard of Design Squad previously or you're not familiar with it, it started off as a partnership between public media um, at WGBH Educational Foundation, which is one of the powerhouse public media stations in the U.S., and schools after school programs and professional engineering organizations around the U.S. to introduce kids to engineering in a fun way that they could make a connection to their everyday lives. Over the years, Design Squad has become a hallmark for kid-oriented short videos, um, different online games, design challenges, and hands-on activities that increase kids' understanding of engineering. Um, so the program started off in 2007 as a broadcast. It was actually a television program that was played across public media stations in the country, in the U.S. Um, and the original show followed two teams of teenagers as they designed and built projects for real clients around the country. It then moved to a multimedia experience on the web with short videos, design challenges, and online games. And throughout that entire um, process, we've had a really strong outreach campaign with over 100 educational outreach partners to reach 275,000 educators, professionals, parents, and kids at various workshops and events. In 2006, we launched Design Squad Global to address how engineering works in a global context. It's, you know, it's great that we are changing the perception about engineering, but we also knew that we needed to do more. Um, a substantial amount of research has been done to show that technical skills alone aren't enough to prepare students for a global workforce. So they need certain dispositions like perseverance and resiliency, knowing how to work well in diverse teams, being able to communicate effectively. Um, so one of the goals of this project was to gain a better understanding of how engineering activities can enable middle school students, so youth ages 10 to 13, to meet the de demands of an increasingly interconnected world. Um, so our, our goals of this project were to really develop innovative ways in which to incorporate effective engineering into informal learning environments. So Design Squad Global, the clubs are actually designed to be enrichment programs out of school, um, but I'll, I'll share some information um, with you later on about the clubs in that about a third of our programs are actually done in schools as um, in a science classroom, in a math classroom, a physics classroom, a STEM classroom. Um, it's really a flexible program in which you can implement in, in the classroom. Uh, we also wanted to inform the field about promising cross-cultural collaboration um, and then gain an understanding of how engineering activities can successfully enable youth ages 10 to 13 to meet the demands of an increasingly interconnected world. Um, and if you have any questions at any time, feel free to type them into the chat box and I will try and address them as we go, but we'll have about um, We'll have a time at the very end for you to ask any questions that, that remain. Um, so in order to do all of this, we had to build in global competency into every facet of the program. Um, so I, I want to ask how many of you all have heard of the term global competency before? Um, and if you, it would be great to just hear your thoughts about what you think that term means. Um, you can type that into the chat box as well. Um, so the issues that are confronting today's world are common to people in places all around the world. So things like climate change and its impact on our communities, minimizing energy consumption and using alternative resources, protecting the environment, um, and improving health and the quality of life. So we want, to, we want kids to know that engineering is a global field and forming successful working relationships is key to engineering in a global context. Today's engineers work with people from all different backgrounds and places to come up with solutions that make a difference in the world. So our process was to spend some time deep in thought about what global competency is in the context of Design Squad Global and what we really wanted the kids to get out of it. Um, so after much deliberation, uh, we came up with this definition. 
that global competency is the ability to communicate and collaborate with people around the globe who have different cultures, perspectives, and concerns. Um, so some of the key goals with this are fostering a desire for kids to investigate their world, um, having them understand that different places have different environments and resources, um, recognizing that our peers have different perspectives and to have empathy and respect for those perspectives. Uh, being able to listen to each other and communicate their ideas effectively. And then lastly, uh, being able to take action. So these are the goals of global competency that are woven throughout the fabric of the Design Squad Global Curriculum. And you'll see a little bit of that in the resources that I'm about to um, show you right now. So the first uh, just general resource for you is the Design Squad Global website. And we are using digital content, specifically videos and games, to support global competency alongside engineering um, and to allow kids to look at the world through the lens of engineering. Um, so we're doing this through some videos. Um, with the shift to global thinking, we're in the process of producing 72 short form videos that promote engineering with the globe, within a global context. Um, and these emphasize the design process, which is a method that engineers use to solve problems. And all these videos focus on building to fulfill real needs. Um, so some of our more recent videos include kid engineers from South Africa who programmed an automated trash can that opens when you wave your hand near the lid. Um, and this was, they had the idea of motivating people in their communities to use these trash cans as opposed to littering um, the streets. And another video is of a girl who started her own aquaponics farm to promote sustainable agriculture. Um, so if you are covering a specific topic in your classroom, these videos are often great ways to help introduce that topic and allows kids to contextualize um, the, the question or topic at hand and make it more real for them. Um, so we've had several educators use these videos in their classrooms, and I recommend that you check out the website and take a look at how some of these videos might apply to what you're doing in your classroom. Um, so now turning to games, Design Squad has a long history of creating innovative games, promoting the design process, creative problem solving, and multiple solutions. Um, so now we are also finding ways to show kids how engineering can impact issues of global significance. And we achieve this through an iterative de design um, development process involving, involving um, user testing at local schools, a collaborative team approach, and feedback from a wide range of professional engineering advisors. So the first game is Don't Flood the Fidgets. It's a flood prevention simulation game. Um, so we know that climate change is causing flooding from around the world, um, in, in places around the world, and it's a crucial issue with both local and global impacts. And what happens in our local community can make an impact on the whole world. And so this game gives kids the opportunity to design their response through building a safe, dry city for fictional fidget characters. Players use real world building materials and strategies like green roofs and pervious pavement as they try to safeguard cities in island, river, and peninsula environments. Um, so to test their designs, players need to flood their city. Um, so you can see this flood uh, has just wiped off most of the city. Um, so we actually provide kids with feedback to help them assess what, what they might need to redesign um, and ideas for what to try next. So it's quite open-ended um, for all of these different games and allows kids to really explore um, using the design process and the, you know, the iterative design process. And what's really great about these games is that kids are able to transfer their learning from the game to uh, design challenges on the Design Squad Global website. So every month we post a different design challenge and kids um, share their original design ideas um, by creating a profile on the website. And it's completely kid friendly. We don't ask for any personal information. They create um, you know, their own username and then they can start designing um, to, to meet different challenges. Um, so as you can see, 
um, last year when the game launched in February, we were excited to see kids incorporating building materials and strategies from the game into some of their original designs. Um, so this one, kids used a uh, swale, which is a marshy hollow where a man-made or natural, uh, it's either man-made or natural, and it helps absorb water and prevents drainage problems. So they used what they were learning from the game in their design challenges. Our newest game is um, Fidgets to the Rescue, and it launched in November, and it builds on the previous game. So climate change isn't just causing flooding, it's also responsible for more and bigger natural disasters around the world and here at home. Um, so the game gives kids, kids the opportunity to use their engineering and design skills in the role of first responders. And players design ways to deliver emergency supplies to the fictional fidget characters after a hurricane or an earthquake. So there are two different scenarios they can design for. Um, so they travel through different types of landscapes that have been damaged because of these natural disasters. And they have a supply truck and this flying robot that helps them in their missions. And so when their path is blocked, players use a special drawing tool to rebuild the road so their truck can keep moving. And they also design simple tools for the robot to clear the way. These games contextualize engineering for a global purpose. And our next game is still in production, but it focuses on using um, aquaponics farming and the global need to grow more food sustainably. So if you have any extra time in your classrooms um, or even in your enrichment programs, these games and design challenges are something that you um, can, can have kids explore and um, really get into. So the content uh, that's available on the Design Squad Global website is really designed for kids to engage with. But there's an entire section um, for parents, educators, and engineers that is curated for the classroom. Um, so as you can see on this slide, you can find resources by a particular topic. And these resources include STEM animations, short videos, and hands-on activities that you can do with kids um, that tie into a particular topic. And the same content is curated into, uh, if you're an educator, if you're a teacher, it's curated into easy lesson plans and interactive lessons on a platform called PBS Learning Media, which is a vast free digital library um, with classroom resources, including lesson plans, interactive lessons, clips, activities, and professional development. Um, so all of the same Design Squad resources are on this platform. Um, but they're curated um, to tie into, at least in the U.S., for national and state standards. And on the website, we also have several um, different educator guides. We have seven um, that contain more than 50 hands-on engineering and invention activities uh, with student handouts and step-by-step -step facilitator notes. So if you're ever trying to run a day-long workshop with different activities, if you want to, you know, run an, an event, um, these are specific guides that you can use to help you plan and, and organize those. Um, so I want to, oh, there's one more. There's a self-guided workshop um, on our website that actually helps you um, learn how to talk to kids about engineering and help to lead engineering activities with kids. Um, a lot of times it's, it's something new for educators or youth leaders to lead open-ended activities. It can be pretty intimidating. So this workshop really gives you the tools and the uh, kind of the skills and knowledge behind how to lead these types of activities. And it also explains science, math, and engineering con concepts that are used in the activities. So what's really special about Design Squad Global is the new outreach project um, that takes all of these learning experiences into the real world through collaborative hands-on activities. So I'm going to pull up the first video that really just shows you what these Design Squad Global clubs are all about. Let's see. OK. 
Give me a second to pull this up. And then I'm going to turn off my audio so that you can hear the video audio from your computers. Design Squad Global offers authentic opportunities for middle school youth around the world to collaborate on real world engineering projects. Design Squad Global is young people learning to open up their mind to a whole world of possibilities. It's STEM education, it's global competencies, it's creating the future leaders. Funded by the National Science Foundation and the Lemelson Foundation, after-school programs around the world are working together to design solutions to help people in their communities. So the kids wanted to make a step stool where the grandma can get on it and reach something that's high. And they put a cushion on the top and underneath they put old tire tracks that they cut up because they didn't want the stool to slide around on the concrete floor. They were really excited about it. So they designed a solar panel cushion for senior citizens that'll give them massages while they rest. A medicine wall where they would drop medicine into little tubes and they would go into these little cups of water for them daily. Once they finish designing, partner sites present their engineering solutions to each other. The main thing was also for young people to interact. Because even the concept of like someone across the world is seeing their work, it's mind-blowing to them. Their interaction sometimes results in a few surprises. The perception that our kids had about the kids in South Africa, that they were poor, malnutritious, not fed, not happy. Kids in South Africa are convinced that you as kids are very rich. And my kids are like, rich? <laughs> like, that doesn't describe us at all. So it was really good to see them break down those cultural barriers that are stereotypes. And it was really fun to see them that they understand that we all live in countries with challenges. The project is having a significant, measurable impact on kids and educators. After participating in DSG, kids increase their understanding of engineering, their interest in people and places around the globe, and their confidence that they could solve problems and create change. And educators increase their comfort leading engineering activities and collaborating with educators from other countries. DSG is being disseminated in the U.S. and countries across Asia, Africa, Europe and South America, enabling kids all over the world to work together to solve real-world problems. For us in our country, engineering is still a predominantly male industry and our girls sometimes are scared to use their imagination. It just opened up their minds a bit to thinking about how they could get these kind of jobs, how they could go into this industry. When I talk about it with my boss, with the people that I work with, it's like I am from the future. Um, so I hope you got to, to watch that video and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, there is also, I think Marina also put in the link to the video um, if you didn't have a chance to um, see it so you can watch it on your own time. Um, so as you can see, the, the club experience is extremely special where kids have an opportunity to learn about engineering, um, but then also they have this really special once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to work alongside kids from uh, another country in designing projects together. So the, the hands-on activity in the club were designed to illustrate how the design process can be used to come up with solutions to real-world problems that people in every community face around the globe. One such activity that's in the club is to build an assistive device, and the challenge is called Helping Hand. Um, there are four different versions of what kids built in this slide. So you can see kids uh, from Botswana, Boston, South Africa, and uh, Twin Cities, Minnesota, and the US. 
And one thing that you may notice is that there's no one solution or right answer. Kids are really encouraged to think creatively and outside the box to come up with a variety of different solutions that all meet the same need. Um, it teaches kids a new way of thinking about problem solving. Um, these activities also offer children the opportunity to learn about the similarities and differences in the designs of their peers based on factors like the local environment, culture, and resources available in their communities. So in this challenge to design an emergency shelter, um, a club that was in Boston, Massachusetts in the U.S. designed theirs for a very, very cold, icy winter. Um, and their partner club in Botswana designed theirs for a sandstorm. And since the kids in Botswana had never even seen snow in their lives before, and kids in Boston had never experienced a sandstorm, they were really blown away to hear just how different their design needs were. Um, and it was just really interesting for them to know that these are needs that we see in both of our communities, but the way that we would answer them or um, the things that we would design might look different um, based on those particular um, nuances of our uh, local context. And those are just some of the activities that kids can do. So they are, um, as you can tell, they are hands-on engineering activities. Kids are really building things and um, they use very local resources um, to, to build. So there's no high, there's no barrier really, uh, a high barrier for um, participation because a lot of these materials you can find in your local community or they already, you already have them in your classrooms. Um, kids in the club also have the opportunity to lead the development of an original project by using what they learned about engineering and the design process to solve a need they see in their own community. So they ask themselves, how as young engineers and inventors in our community help people to stay healthy? Um, how can we help people stay safe? How can we improve our school? How can we protect the environment? Um, so they're really thinking about how engineering can be used to come up with solutions to things they see in their everyday lives and in their communities. Um, so some of, I'm going to share some of the original projects that kids have invented before. Um, they include mirror glasses from a club in southern, um, the southern part of the U.S. in Mississippi. They saw a need to make their teachers' lives easier. Um, so the invention allows their teacher to monitor their class while facing the, the board um, so they can look in the mirror and then see what their kids are up to behind them. A uh, club in South Africa faced regular power outages. And for this particular club, they were located in one of, in, in Soweto, South Africa, so in a slum community. And so because it was a computer clubhouse, they um, had to be in a building that didn't have any windows. And so um, because South Africa faces a lot of power outages, um, the building gets completely dark and pitch black. And so they built a remote controlled car that lights up and guides people out of a building when they lose power. And my personal favorite is a Rube Goldberg device from Botswana called the MedMagic. Um, Botswana has the second highest prevalence of HIV in the world, so this club wanted to make pill-taking fun for kids with HIV. Um, so they designed this really cool contraption where they have a ball, it rolls down, it knocks pills into this tube, and then they fall into a cup of water for kids. So those are just some of the examples of what kids have come up with to address problems in their communities. So uh, I want to share what the final Design Squad glo global model looks like. Um, we it, and the basics of really running your club. Um, so uh, we ended up with two programs, a six-week and a 12-week program. Um, each session is 60 minutes in length. So most teachers can accommodate the activities into their classrooms uh, depending on the time that they have. So most classrooms in the United States have classes that are either 45 to 55 minutes long, and some classes are up to an hour and 15 minutes. So a lot of times teachers can really uh, take the, these activities and incorporate them into their classrooms. 
Um, and the activities are designed for children ages 10 to 13. Um, this also varies depending on location. In the US, we tend to see younger kids participate in these activities. Uh, but then in Southern Africa, where um, kids just haven't gotten to the, the level of um, content knowledge that they need to do some of these engineering activities, we see older kids, so more teenagers that participate in the activities. So um, as an educator, um, I recommend that you take a look through the resources and um, see, you know, are these activities appropriate for the age group that I work with and how can I adapt them to, to be um, beneficial for the age group that I, that I um, teach. Um, so the size of the club, an ideal size, is 10 to 12 members. Um, and really this is, it's a small group, but it's, uh, we recommend that so that um, as a facilitator, you can really be involved with um, your children's learning in small groups. Um, there are some minimum requirements for participation, like um, basic English proficiency for leaders and participants. Um, we've had clubs that run the program, but they run it individually on their own. And so as um, an educator, if you're familiar with English, you can take the activities and then lead them in the home language of the students that you work with. Um, we found that this happens a lot in Southern Africa where there are multiple um, languages spoken outside of English. We've seen this happen in Jordan. Um, we have a couple of club guide materials that are available in Arabic. Um, we have translated it to Vietnamese, but um, ideally in the future we'd like to translate it to more um, languages for people to use. But right now we have English, um, Arabic, and Vietnamese. Um, we also have some basic technology requirements. In order to be able to exchange information with your partner um, overseas, you need to have basic internet access to access email. Um, and then you also uh, ideally would um, be able to take photos and videos of your club to be able to exchange with your partner leader. Um, so those are kind of the minimum requirements. And there in order to run the activities, you'll need some inexpensive materials and supplies for hands-on activities. And, and like what I mentioned before, these are things that you can typically find in your community. So we use uh, materials that can be recycled, um, cardboard, plastic bottles, cans, um, tape. Uh, these are pretty common materials, I think, that most people can find in their communities. And we also say, use whatever you have. Um, kids are really creative. Um, so whatever materials you have, they can still um, figure out a way to invent and design to, to meet needs in their community using what they have. Um, so once uh, groups that are interested can sign up and they are paired with a club in a different country and they run their clubs during the same period. So the clubs do the same session during the same week and then they share their experiences with each other through virtual exchanges. And most of these are done... Um, asynchronously, um, so they're not real-time video exchanges. Um, if you can imagine a club in California that's partnering with a club in Australia, that, uh, Australia, the time difference is over 12 hours, so it's really difficult to coordinate um, uh, trying to do a video chat. But some clubs have been successful doing it, but thankfully the, the club guide is designed uh, to be such that you can exchange after you've done your session, but do it through email um, and through documents and scans and photos and videos of your club. So the really getting into the models now, there are two different versions. The six-week club guide is for youth leaders who are new to engineering, um, and the other is a 12-week program for more seasoned educators who want a more in-depth cross-cultural experience. And each of these has core engineering activities that introduce kids to engineering, invention, and the design process. So the helping hand, the emergency shelter, are just two of those activities that are included in the club guide. <coughs> um, the 12-week club actually includes the original partner project, and they work on this in teams, and they build on this session by session following the design process. Um, and in the club, there are several opportunities for partner clubs to share information about themselves, their countries, and their engineering activities. 
Uh, so in the six-week guide, there are three different partner exchanges. And in the 12-week guide, there are uh, six partner exchanges. And the club ends with a party where they share their final projects with one another. So the club guide, um, I'm going to share with you now some of the resources from the club that are entirely free for educators to use in your classrooms and your programs. Um, so we have the two club guides that have everything a club leader needs in order to run their club. It includes a recruitment poster, uh, club membership cards, a letter to parents about the program, a materials checklist, and a getting started list. And each of the sessions has an overview, um, and it provides the goals for each of the sessions. So these are the objectives that you want to accomplish um, uh, at the end of the uh, the end, by the end of the session. And it has step-by-step -step instructions for what you need to do to prepare ahead, to lead the session, and then what to do after the session. There's also a self-paced online training for club leaders. Um, so as an educator, it really helps you um, to, to prepare ahead of time. And so that you would take this training before you start your club. And it's available both online and it can be completed offline. So there are two different versions depending on what kind of internet access that you have. We try and make things pretty accessible to um, our users. And the training covers the foundational concepts behind Design Squad Global and walks club, club leaders through the process of setting up their own club. Um, so this is great for if you've never really read uh, led engineering activities before, you've never had an opportunity to work um, with an educator, uh, a partner um, in a different country. This really gives you that foundation and the tools that you need um, in order to know how to, to talk to kids about engineering, how to work with a partner in a different country, and how to foster your kids' global competency. And since we are a media-based program, all of um, we have several um, videos in the training. Uh, these are professional development videos with advice from real club leaders on how to lead a Design Squad Global Club and how to work with a partner from a different country. And all of the club's resources can be found on PBS Learning Media, which is that digital library that I mentioned before. So all the videos, the um, club leader training, the club guides are all on this website. So I encourage you to check it out um, and, yeah, use all of the, the materials. So I want to move into kind of sharing some of the experiences that clubs have had. Kids often enter the club with stereotypes of a country or a group of people based on what they see on TV um, or what they hear in the media. Um, this is something that's so prevalent in the U.S. right now, and I'm, I'm sure that you can all relate to that in the countries that you're coming from as well. Um, so by doing Design Squad Global, these kids soon realize that they have more in common with their peers from around the world than they had originally thought. Um, sometimes what they learned can be pretty deep, but what surprised me the most is how sometimes what we would consider superficial, like the shoes someone wears, can be the most profound at transforming a person's perspective. Um, so sometimes all that takes to make a big difference is three words, Nikes, Empire, and Nickelodeon. Um, and this next video that I want to share is a story about a young girl, Neo, whose participation in Design Squad Global inspired her to pursue engineering as a career and allowed her to explore her sense of agency to solve problems, be creative, and discover more about her interests and abilities. So, What Global Club at, at Boys and Girls Club of South Africa as a pilot, um, as something that's a startup and seeing if it's going to work, how it's going to work as a part of a research. And I had this group of lovely young ladies who 
volunteered themselves to just join into this wonderful program. And there was one um, uh, student and club member in particular, her name is Nao, and she started with Design Squad Global and was really a bit uh, clueless in terms of what this engineering monster could be. And um, they, were, they all thought it was such a patriarchal kind of career where it's like, okay, men only, guys do that. I thought that girls are not strong or tough enough to be... I, thought, I just thought that while, when you're doing engineering, you're just going to uh, grab heavy stuff. But I didn't know that you can also, not grabbing heavy stuff, you can also create something. Um, like something beautiful out of it. After doing the program, um, the club then got an opportunity to take part in an engineering week challenge um, that, that was run by Flo, which is an engineering company here in the country. And Nell was the only girl in this team that went to go and compete with other private schools and public schools. So um, for a group of kids from Soweto who don't have fancy schooling, it was quite a challenge for them and also kind of... Um, a, a, a big task for them to take part in and they went then went on to win this competition i don't think we would have won the competition if we didn't do the design squad because we wouldn't know how we wouldn't know the basics of doing a structure and after the competition and now made it away to us here at the club that she's actually quite interested in, in you know following up on engineering as a career. And recently she's just started this mentorship program with uh, Marion Roberts, which is a, a very well-known engineering company in the country as well. And they mentoring a group of girls from our club called Smart Girls. They mentor them and they take them to their sites, they take them to the offices, basically showing them the ins and outs of a female in an um, engineering position in a, in a company. After doing Design Squad Global, like, I saw that you can be creative and do a lot of stuff. Like, you realize that as a girl you can do some stuff that people told you that you've never... You, uh, a girl can't do this, they can't do that, like, just limited to things. But then, after doing the engineering thing, it's, like, amazing. I started seeing what I'm good at and what I'm not good at, like, it really helped me find out the inner me in some kind of way. So I hope you were able to watch that video. Sometimes the Adobe platform has some issues playing videos. So I put the link in for this video on the Dropbox or on um, the chat for everyone. Um, so you can check it out on your own time. It's a really inspirational story, so I definitely recommend it. Um, so as part of the project, we did an action research study on a pilot group of 14 sites over two rounds of implementation. Um, so, action research basically involves the educator in taking a look at your own practices and making um, analytical changes to what you're doing based on what you're learning from your own um, implementation of different activities. Um, so we, for the action research study, we involved club leader and student pre and post surveys, uh, participant focus groups, regular check-ins with club leaders, and club leader interviews. And so here is a summary of our findings. Um, and we are in the process of putting together a full report and executive summary that I'm happy to share with anyone if you're interested in seeing it. Um, and so a lot of these you saw in the first video that um, by participating in Design Squad Global, kids had a better understanding of engineering and how engineering can make a positive difference in the world it increased their motivation for participating in engineering activities in the future. Um, they had a greater desire to learn about people and places around the globe, and they, um, they just had a boost in confidence that they could solve problems and create change, as you saw from the video. And, and also for club leaders, for educators that um, ran the program, they found that they 
increase their comfort level leading engineering activities and collaborating with educators from around the world. Um, so the clubs, we, we launched this program in fall, um, in October of 2016, with 65 clubs in the first cohort. And now we are in our fourth cohort, um, and we've had nearly 300 clubs participate from 25 countries around the world, including South Africa, Nigeria, Kenya, Brazil, Jordan, Vietnam, China, Peru, um, Haiti, Cambodia, and Australia. And in Europe, we've only had a few. Uh, we've had a couple of clubs in the UK. We've had some in Germany and the Ukraine. Um, so we'd love to be able to, to see some additional participation from um, um, educators from across Europe. Um, so we've talked a lot about the clubs, but how do you participate and find a partner? Um, so after you uh, pick which club to run, the six-week or the 12-week program, the next thing you'll do is to pick when you'd like to run the club. In order for us to match clubs with each other, um, we, we like to have kind of a set date for when the clubs will run um, so that you can kind of plan your calendars together. So... This is our program calendar, and we have uh, another set of clubs that will run from June through August, and you can do that any time within those club dates. And the deadline to sign up is May 1st. Uh, we are also planning to op up, open up additional dates for clubs that will run from September to November, and also another one that will run from October through, through December. Um, so do please email me if you're interested in running a club during that time, and once we have updated our sign-up form with new registration periods, I can let you know. So here's our registration form. You can find this on the PBS Kids website and go to the Design Squad Global Clubs program and there will be a link for you to sign up. Um, so once you sign up, we are able to match you with the partner for a particular time period. Um, so that is everything about the clubs. And then lastly, I want to let you know about a campaign that you can get involved with right now. Um, STEM Discovery Week is taking place from today until April 30th with the theme of STEM professionals going back to school. Um, and so the idea is to encourage companies and schools to collaborate around the visit of STEM professionals in classrooms. Um, so as an educator, you can reach out to professional engineering organizations or companies in your community to recruit engineers to come into your classroom and talk about the work that they do to inspire your youth. Um, and then you can have them even do an engineering, uh, a hands-on activity with your kids. So really what you do is up to you. Um, all you need to do is to go to the STEM Alliance website and register your activity in the Organize Your STEM Event competition. Um, so Scientix and the STEM Alliance will award um, the organizers of the best events by inviting, to, inviting the winners to an all-expense paid trip to the Science Projects Workshop um, in Brussels. Um, and that will happen between the 23rd and the 25th of June. Um, so the, the criteria is that for every 50 eligible submissions, there will be one winner invited to um, this workshop. Um, and only teachers are eligible. Um, so if you look under the resource page of the website, you'll find our Design Squad Global Activity Guides, which you can use to help plan your event. Um, so I want to thank you all again for sticking around um, through the end of the presentation. And I think we have some time now for some questions.
I'm going to um, also share my email address at the very bottom so that if you do have any questions um, at a later time, you can reach out to me. And thank you for the very helpful feedback. Um, it's been a pleasure to, to present and share our work with you. I hope that it's useful. Um, we have a question from Palma, and she asks, is it possible to do, do this program with kindergarten children? Um, we typically don't, it depends on the age group of kindergarten children. We, in the U.S., we've had kids that are young as in the second grade, so kids ages seven participate in the program. Um, I think some of the activities can be quite challenging for younger students, so if there's five to six, some of these hands-on activities um, can be hard for them to build or hard for them to um, even grasp some of the concepts behind. There are a few activities, so not in the club guide itself, but if you go to the Design Squad Global uh, webpage and you look at um, under build, there are several um, just really great hands-on activities that um, are a little bit easier and you can use for a younger age audience. And uh, what's really nice about that is that it comes in a photo essay style format. Um, and so there are pictures for each step that coordinates with the design process that you can use. Thanks, Alania, for this uh, lovely presentation. Um, I saw that you already started uh, answering some questions. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, which is great, it's great. Um, uh, I just wanted to mention some that I think maybe we might have missed that people shared before the end of your presentation. Um, there was a lot of highlight from different people uh, recognizing the importance of criti critical thinking and inquiry-based um, skills and, and processes. And then Erviola Konomi also I wanted to highlight that because she shared a very interesting story about um, um, about a club that she formed with her students uh, about opening a, a clothing stores. Uh, so I just wanted to give a shout out. Um, and yeah, and I also wanted to remind the participants about the the feedback that they are supposed to fill in if they want to receive a certificate. And other than that, thanks a lot for the presentation. I don't know if you want to add uh, anything else. I don't see any other question. Um, but if you want to add anything else, just please <laughs> go ahead. I, no, I thank you. Um, it's been an honor to present uh, with Scientix. Great, great thing. So um, we still have five more minutes uh, for questions and answers. So maybe we'll stick around here a little bit more to see if anybody else wants to share something through the, through the, ch through the chat. So just a reminder for everyone, if they want to share something, please um, write it down.
Well, um, I don't think there's any more questions apart from the feedback that, as we've all seen here in the chat, is great. So other than that, um, thanks, Arani, again for the presentation. It was very interesting. Um, also, thanks for sharing uh, the information about the STEM Alliance uh, scheme and competition. So, and thanks for everyone for attending to the webinar. And as Noel has put on the chat, remember that to get the certificate to, uh, of attending this webinar, you need to fill in the Survey Monkey survey. And that's all for today. Thanks again to everyone, and I, we hope to see you next time. Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending.